Well, today, Brandon, we're going to talk about free website audits. And you've been doing these for, what, 20 years? Oh, yeah. Long time. Long time. So when you first sit down and you take a look at a client website, what sort of is the checklist of things that you're going through in a website audit? Well, I think one of the biggest things that most people want from their website is they want it to drive business. Some way or another, this should be a lead generation tool or it should produce revenue or somehow it should help to further their business along. And so one of the first things that I always look at is how well is the website going to perform in the search engines? Because if you have a beautiful website that is designed well and it looks good, you're happy with it, but it never shows up in the search results, that can be a problem if you're using your website as a tool for your business. So I always look at the code, the back end of the website, look for anything that needs to be optimized, look for any anomalies that might be there that could inhibit search engine rankings. And I just kind of have a, uh, I think it's got 17 points on it right now that we've got a checklist of how are our H tags set up. Uh, we check all those kinds of things, like how much content for the keywords that you have on your site that you're trying to target, how many keywords or how many uh, total words on the page do your competitors have? And so we want to see what Google cares about for your specific set of search results and make sure your website is optimized so it performs well in the search results. So it sounds like this is, uh, you're not running an automated tool. This is a manual check. Your eyes are on the website doing a little research. Yeah, I, I built my first website in 2001. And so I've, I've been doing this for a long time. And I haven't ever found a tool that will give me everything that I look at manually. So I do use tools that you know, they give me the word count for the page. They show me the H1, H2, H3 tags. They do automated checks to make sure that there's uh, that the page is set to be indexed. It looks for meta tags and meta descriptions on the images and make sure the images are compressed properly. But all of those things, that's kind of just the, the functionality of it, but you still need to look at it and say, what can't the tool see that I need to look at with my experience and with my past, you know, you've seen things one time that you, you remember, you say, oh, that one time there's this website that should have ranked, but it wasn't ranking. It wasn't showing up in the search results. And I remembered that something happened. And so you're, you're kind of always like in the back of your mind, you've got a checklist of 500 things that you've seen one time that you're saying, that's something that I'll remember. Yeah. Well, you mentioned at the outset, so the checklist, what are like maybe the top 10 things you've mentioned H tags and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Do you want to, what are like the first things that sort of pop out for you? The, the first thing I look at is I, I try to look from a user experience standpoint. So if I am someone coming to your website for the first time, what are my first impressions? Do I understand what the goal is? So as a user, am I supposed to buy your product? Am I supposed to fill out a form for more information? Am I supposed to call you? What do we want the user, the, the customer essentially to do when they get to the website? We call it a call to action. What should that call to action be? That call to action should be clear, either clear in formatting size, the font should be larger, the color should be different, an arrow. I mean, somehow we want to tell somebody, this is a primary part of what we're looking for you to do. And then maybe they want more information. Maybe they want to see the about page or the history or other products. But ultimately, my first thing is, what does the page look like? Does it have clarity in its purpose? And that's not something that a tool can give you. You have to just look and say, I'm a real person. Here's how a real person perceives this website. So calls to action are huge because most people don't get those right. And you know, I don't want to get too nerdy, but we have a, a conversion rate optimization, which means for every visitor that comes to your site, what's the percentage that converts, the percentage that accomplishes that goal that we're looking for? Buying a product, filling out a form. And it, it, a low conversion rate means ultimately low revenue. So if we can increase the conversion rate by 5%, you know, 5% of all of your visitors are now doing what we want that's good. So we've increased it from, you know, maybe it was 10%. Now it's 15%. We've essentially added 50% to 
total bottom line revenue that comes from the website. So looking at and trying to identify what are some of those initial things that I would say this can be improved. Like for one customer, we had, they had uh, three products and they were all lined up in the, the picture that they took, which they took the picture at home. So it wasn't a professional photo studio or a professional photographer, but the images were kind of like off set a little bit. And so I looked at it and it, it was distracting. You know, <laughs> you get to their website and the pictures are skewed. And so, you know, we downloaded the pictures and we, we cleaned it up. We adjusted them. So they're straight. We cleaned up the background. So there wasn't like a, they had like a white sheet in the background. So we removed the background So just little things that immediately make a difference. And so they had um, a couple different colors of green. Their, their product was green. And so they had three different colors of green on their website. None of them matched the actual product green. So with the packaging and three more colors, they had four colors of green, all similar. But when you just look at it, you're like, that's not quite right. So we identified what the actual color was, and then we matched the website to the color. So little things like that, that a tool can't give you, but a website audit, you look at, you say, okay, here are some recommendations. Here are the things that immediately would benefit your business if we just fixed and changed. Those are all great points. The color and coordinating that is so important. Yeah. It's um, not something a checklist can give you. It's just something like, oh, I've seen this before. I've done this enough times to, to notice variations in color. Yeah. Well, what are some of the technical, sort of the key technical aspects that you might look at? One of the biggest things is there's a, a setting in most content management systems that when you're developing a website, you have it blocked from search engines. And that is one of the very first things I always look at because maybe two or 3% of, of our customers come to us and say, what's wrong with my website? And I look and that's the first thing I check. They've told Google and they've told Bing and they've told Yahoo and they've told DuckDuckGo and they've, they've told all the search engines, don't come to my website. And so then they're confused. Why won't the search engines come to my website? because you've told them not to. So <laughs> that's a, always one of the first things I look at is, are you showing up in the search results for any of the keywords that you wanna show up for? So making sure that the website is initially optimized well with that, those types of settings turned off where we're telling Google, please index this website, please come to the website. Um, also, I always look for length of code, some sites, load very slowly because they have so much code. And that's almost always based on the content management system, the CMS that they're using. We tend to use WordPress and Shopify and Squarespace for most of our sites. They're fairly well optimized out of the box. And then there's other optimization plugins and tools that we use. And that's always a big thing to me is what does the code look like? Uh, how complex is the code? Is it unnecessarily complex or is it something that it needs to be complex because what the website is trying to do is is complex so there's a, an understanding that we're doing a lot on the website so the code is necessarily complex but there are other websites that are very simple websites that you look and they've got 10,000 lines of code and we can optimize it down to 300 and all of that means the page loads slowly because if you're reducing 9,700 lines of code, all of that code has to be sent from the web server that your website's on to each individual website visitor. And so every person is getting 97% more than they need. And that means the website loads slowly. So those are just like a couple quick things we look for. Um, if we're running in WordPress, we always check for unnecessary plugins most people have five or 10 plugins that they don't need. Uh, there's also good plugins and bad plugins. Bad plugins are generally ones that haven't been updated in a year or more. They're potentially dangerous. They open, your do open the door to a liability from someone who's hacking or someone who's, you know, we call it a middleman attack where they're in the middle of your website where someone's trying to buy something, they grab that information. So you always wanna make sure that your website's secure and plugins are a big way to avoid that. So speed of the website, the code, 
um, the way the code is structured, things like SSL and security. Um, those are those are some of the big immediate technical things that that I always think to look at. Sure, and then I guess we get to like uh, you know basic on-page optimization. I've mm -hmm. seen you've probably seen many times where you know somebody is uh, like a, trying to rank for like dentist in Nashville, and their website just the homepage says Dr. Smith. Yeah, yeah. And that's what are some of the what are some of the key on-page uh, that you look for? Yeah, I always see it as a conversation. So your website is talking to the Google search algorithm. The algorithm is a mathematical formula that is asking your website for information. So it's saying, what is your website about? So as clearly as possible, we want to tell the search algorithm what the website is about. Now, if your only important thing that you care about is Dr. Smith, then yeah, we can say Dr. Smith is a dentist. But if you care about things like dentist in Nashville or in the suburbs, you know, each of the, the surrounding suburbs, I care about these five cities or these five neighborhoods. We could say dentist in city, dentist in suburb, dentist in neighborhood. And all of those things that we put on the website as actual text tells Google, I care about dentist in Nashville, dentist in suburb. And so those things are really important not necessarily from a user experience, but from a search engine experience. And so balancing the user experience, what an actual person sees, and the search experience, what the Google algorithm sees, is a, it's, it's like a fine dance because you don't wanna have what we call keyword stuffing where you have Dr. Smith is a dentist in Nashville. Nashville dentists are, but you know, it's like we've got that same phrase just iterated 15 times on the page and a real person comes and they're like, what is going on here? This doctor can't speak English. You know, <laughs> this doesn't even make sense to me. So you wanna balance what we call keyword density and keyword stuffing with real people being able to read it. And so if you wanna rank for something, you need to have that on the page. And that's something that we always look at. You know, do you have a keyword? And if so, then we should see it in the title. We should see it in the H1 and H2 tags. We should see it in the body of a paragraph. Um, and that's, that's usually what we're looking for is, do you have that keyword on the site? Do you have it on the site a couple times? Does it make sense? Do you have permutations of that? So dentist in Nashville, Nashville dentist, those are two different permutations of the same type of keyword. Awesome. So what is, um, this is a lot of meaty stuff. We've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah. All of it's included in the website audit. What is then the, the deliverable to the client? Do you do a video? Is it a report? Yeah, so it's, it's easiest for me and it's, it's usually most digestible. Uh, so I usually just record my screen, open up the client's website and say, all right, well, let's take a look and see what we see. So I, I have a plugin that looks at the H1 tags. It looks at the word count. So we'll open that plugin, see what it sees. And we'll say, okay, so from a user, usability experience standpoint, here are some changes that you could make from a design standpoint. You know, maybe it looks great or maybe there's some changes. Uh, pull up the source of the code and look and see, you know, can you defer some loading of, you know, JavaScript or some images? Maybe that would make the page load faster. We'll look at the speed and see what kind of improvements we can make. And really my goal is, you know, however you choose to make those improvements, here's all the information, what you take and how you want to do it. Maybe you've got a web guy already, so take my video, send it directly to him, let him make those improvements. Maybe you're the web guy, uh, do it yourself. If you don't have time, that's where, you know, we're happy to help with those changes, but of course, no obligation. Here's, you do whatever you want with it, but here's all the, the information. Great. And of course, our mission is we want to sell people affordable websites that work. That, yes. That help generate leads that look great, that people love. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, if you're making money, if the if our customers are making money, then there's it's a no-brainer to continue working with us. If we build your website and it's ugly and it doesn't work and you're not making money, it's just an expense. And I would cancel that expense if it were just an expense. But if you see the value, if you're actually bringing in customers, I always I always tell my clients, you know, 
try to understand what the lifetime value of your customer is. So, you know, if we continue with our dentist example, say a dentist makes hundred dollars a visit from a customer and they come three times a year. So that's $300 of net profit a year. If the customer on average stays with them 10 years, the lifetime value of a customer is $3,000. So if you, if you extrapolate that and say, how many customers do I get from my website? Say you get one a month, you get 12 new customers a, a year. So you're getting $1,200 in revenue. And if you, you know, you kind of like can take that and multiply it out and say, is the cost of a website worth what the lifetime value of my customer is? For most people in most industries, if you get two or three customers a year from your website, you've more than broken even. You have to be a really um, low lifetime value of a customer to not at least break even with two customers a year. And most of our clients are getting, you know, at least a few contacts a month and then they're working to close those clients. So a, a website for most people, it's, it's an investment more than an expense. Awesome. Well, if you're watching this video and you're looking for a website audit, you're looking for a checkup on your website, reach out to us and we'll give you a hand. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Mike.